on a team that won the Africa Cup of Nations in 1996. Now, for more on the story, we join on the line by SAFA President Danny Yordan. Mr. Yordan, thank you very much indeed for your time and our deepest, deepest condolences to you and those who knew Phil. Uh, firstly, catch us, uh, get us up to speed with regards to the circumstances surrounding his death. Well, uh, as you've indicated, uh, Phil was, was uh, sick over a long period of time. He started off uh, at the class uh, Dorp Hospital and then went to Baraguana and finally was transferred to Donald uh, Gordon Hospital. Now, uh, we always ask, but what is wrong with Paul? Because he was losing weight. And they told us various things. Uh, ultimately and finally, they said uh, it was cancer. And uh, by then, I assume it was too late. When I saw him on the, 8th, uh, on the 5th of January, I saw him in the Donald uh, Gordon Hospital. He had lost a lot of weight, uh, and I could see that he was struggling. However, when we talked football, there was a glow on his face, and he was energized. And I asked him, uh, what, are the, what are the memories that stand out uh, in football? And he said, uh, the qualification for, for France 98, and particularly the match in Point Noir. Uh, against Congo Brazzaville. Of course, we lost that match 2-1. Uh, they cut uh, Mark Fish's eyes with the elbows, both eyes. And he said when he looked at Mark Fish, and Mark Fish is a, a good friend of him, also. And he said to him, look, these people are not going to France. We'll get them at FNB and uh, going to make sure that we qualify. Mm. And, of course, ultimately it was the so-called Masinga goal, an incredible goal uh, that took us to France. And he still uh, holds uh, dear memories of the goal and the qualification to France. Uh, there were 100,000 people in the FNB stadium on that day uh, and singing uh, CIA France. Yeah. So that was uh, special. But also uh, for all of us transitioning from... Uh, being a player to being an administrator, he was a delegate for the Masters and Legends in the South South Congresses. Uh, and he worked as an ambassador and traveled the world with me. When we were lobbying uh, for the hosting of the World Cup in South Africa, so he's, a, he's a committed South African, he's a patriot, uh, dedicated uh, to this country and has worked hard was on and off the field for football. Yeah. So that w was that what he was doing uh, towards the end of his life, very much still involved in football in South Africa? Yes. He was, uh, he was on the executive of Masters and Legends. Uh, together with Buna Machata, they are working hard uh, to bring all the uh, former players together. And if you look now uh, and look five years back, you see a high number of former players who are coaches, even in the PSL clubs, coaches, uh, former players who are coaches uh, at the level of uh, the NFD and of uh, the ABC Mochepe League, but also in our region. And we also introduce many of these former players uh, into our own national teams, junior uh, teams and the, the senior teams. Uh, so they continue to participate. And, and so had uh, a shaping influence by bringing the former players into uh, the operations of, of South African football. I mean, he reportedly played over, earned 50 caps, over 50 caps for Bafana Bafana. What sort of void do you think he'll leave in, in South African football? Well, you know, so played... Uh, uh, in, in, in Europe, he played in Bari in Italy, and if you talk to the people of Bari, you talk to Antonio Mataresi from Bari, uh, he played at Leeds, and then of course he played uh, uh, for Mamelodi Sundown in South Africa. Uh, he was uh, a person that always went onto the field to give his best, and after retirement, uh, he worked uh, with the SAB uh, program. Uh, he worked with the, the legends. They have managed to build uh, the South African Masters and Legends into a single uh, structure that's affiliated to SAFA. Uh, we had 
various structures for, for we had uh, a structure called uh, the class of 96 we had another group of the legends we had another group of the masters and they had worked hard to create a single organization for former footballers uh, and of course his administration skills uh, contributed to that so uh, we will miss his effort his energy uh, and his participation in the congress he went to address uh, the Safa Congress on many occasions, mm, mm. Uh, and uh, we were missing. It's a huge loss for us. Dr. Yodan, share with us, if you will, maybe some of the lighter moments, uh, some of your interactions with Phil, for you personally. <laughs> uh, when he was a player, you know, we had, we, had, we had remarkable players in that team. And of course, uh, Fama Singer, David Nyati, uh, Mark Fish, uh, uh, they were special players. Um, and they brought joy and happiness. And you must know that uh, international football is very stressful. So I'm not going to talk too much uh, on the fun side, but uh, we had wonderful moments together. And of course, sometimes we did not agree uh, with the, uh, the extent of the fun, but um, a, a player like Shushma Shewu was always the, the guiding influence and the, the balancing influence in that team. So uh, I think we just had a special group of players uh, mm. who some, uh, as you say, enjoyed the fun side and others who always committed to, to hard work and, and, and being patriotic to, to this country. So, so uh, yeah, he knows when there was time to, to have fun and time to for hard work. Yeah. And we were missing. No doubt those fun memories will be uh, close to, uh, to your heart and you'll uh, no doubt uh, impart that knowledge and uh, that, that full and you had that interaction that you had with the youngsters. What do you think the youngsters coming through the ranks now can learn from Phil Masinga? Well, Phil Masinga um, was always around and whether it is in the Congress uh, talking to them about administration, you must remember that Phil started studying. He went to do a course at Nelson Mandela University we encourage him uh, to, to continue his studies because we saw in him somebody that can really have a shaping influence of, of, of young players uh, in South Africa. But more importantly, that they have to look at their playing career off the field because that's where we have huge problems in South Africa, not only South Africa, in many countries, of what the former player is going to do after retirement. And so has gone that path. Uh, and he realized that to have an alternative career off the field, he must study. And he went that path and encouraged other players to do the same. If you look at now our players, uh, if you go to, to uh, Banana Banana, then 80% of those players you find are graduates. And there are masters uh, graduates there. We are doing the same with our young players, encouraging them uh, to play, but also to study. That's why we took the under-17 team when they went to the World Cup in Uruguay. We had mentors, tutors for them, uh, because they were writing matric exam. Uh, so football must be enjoyed, but beyond the football, you must encourage young players to study and to, to get education. And that is the message that Phil leads for all of us, that we must encourage our players to find a balance between the playing career and the important aspect of education and a post-retirement uh, career for these players. Sage advice indeed, no doubt the death of uh, Phil Masinga will leave a huge void in the South African football fraternity. Once again, sir, uh, condolences to you and your colleagues. Uh, Dr. Daniel Adan, Safa President, thank you very much indeed for your time.